Hey guys, so I'm in a 2021 Sprinter 170. This particular client wants their head unit upgraded with a new aftermarket head unit with a 10 inch display out of a company called 4x4 Shop in Canada, 4x4shop.ca. So we're gonna replace the old head unit with this head unit. This particular van from factory came with a rear view camera that used to live in a small screen right here in our rear view mirror. We're gonna reroute that rear view mirror to this larger display on this new head unit here. It also comes with uh, Apple CarPlay. We'll have some USB ports. Um, we'll tie in the GPS. And we're also gonna do an extended microphone uh, for hands-free talking. So we're gonna walk you through how we did this and the different wires that we had to make connections with and show you the final product and the process as we go along. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do, and it's a little bit tough, you just gotta keep working at it, is you take one of these plastic tools and you start in a corner and just start snapping this cover off as you go around, all around the outside. So you'll snap this cover off and it just pulls out, just like that. And you'll see here that we have this factory large harness here and another, uh, another wire we're gonna start fishing wires up into this rear view mirror area where our current rear view camera sits and start making connections uh, for our GPS, which we'll likely install right under here, closest to the window up under the dash uh, and walk you through you know, the process of the wiring. One of the things that you'll wanna do with this particular unit is we're gonna reuse these vent fans. So there's clips here on the side that we're gonna clip down on. And this, uh, these existing vent fans will, will pop through the bottom and we'll reuse these two vent fans on the new head unit. So uh, we'll kind of video that and show you how that, that process looks. And then we'll begin the wiring hookup from there. All right, so here we are now, um, kind of kind of walk through. We're using the factory rear view camera here in this 2021 Mercedes Sprinter 170 cargo van. There's a few different configurations for camera setups. Um, ours just has the one in the rear. It displays in your rear view mirror on the left side. Um, so we're gonna show you how to actually wire this. There's not really good, clear instructions online. Um, our iNav unit, they give you this little uh, wiring harness here. It says camera, um, there's a 12 volt power. There's a couple other ones that are capped off. Um, all we need for our application is going to be this. This is an RCA video input feed. Um, and then we run our own RCA cable. We ran it right here behind the airbag, up through the A pillar, across the headliner, popped out right here. So this is the cover for the rear view mirror. And basically what you do is you dislodge this. Um, it's gonna be on there and then you can reach up here you can click one of these tabs, get one side down, click the other one, it'll release this, pull it forward, and then it just slides down like that. Um, and then it'll give you access here to your rear view mirror. You'll notice that there is this wiring harness that goes into the side of the rear view mirror. So what you're gonna wanna do is you just disconnect that. And then this is the wiring harness that you're gonna get your video feed from. Um, you'll notice that we have a white cable with a blue stripe, a black cable with a blue stripe on the right side of that harness, a brown in the middle, and then on the left, you can see where we already cut, there's a black and a white wire. So those are your video feeds. You do not need a power running because the factory rear view camera is already getting power from the actual vehicle. So there's no need to run a power to it. So here's our RCA cable. That's gonna go back to the back side of our new head unit. We've got a black and a white coming out of that RCA cable. You're gonna notice it's gonna look similar here. All right, so you've got this uh, large black cable. Um, it actually splits out under this shrink wrap into two cables, a white cable and a black cable. Um, our RCA happens to be opposite. So we actually had to run uh, black to white and then white to black. 
When you splice those together, um, you gotta check on your, your head unit and it might be a little fuzzy when you put it in reverse. There's a couple of settings that we'll show you here in a second. Um, but a good thing to do is, you know, just quickly connect these, test it, make sure that it is working properly before you actually permanently install it. Cause you don't have a lot of slack here. So you only really get a couple of tries. All right, so there's gonna be a lot going on back here in the back of um, the aftermarket unit. However, things are relatively well labeled. Um, you've got your big harness for the actual factory harness right here. Um, that has a few connections. One on the side here is actually labeled CAN for us. And if you look at some of the cables on that wiring harness, they're also labeled CAN. Um, so that one goes right there. And then you've got a lot of different accessory ports in the back, a um, couple for USB. We have one for our rear view uh, backup camera right here. We've got one for our microphone um, so that you can actually talk through the unit. Um, we also have like a SIM card. So there's a bunch of different options. They actually do a really good job of all of these connection ports, if you will. They all have a different number of actual connections so you can't really cross them up and get the wrong ones plugged in the wrong slot um, you basically just look at how many pins um, are on each one and they match up perfectly so that's basically how you do that you also have one right here that i missed and was searching for for a while um, it's right here it's for all these buttons um, so just keep looking and uh, you'll probably find them so we're going to plug back in our ground now that we have everything connected um, so that we hopefully don't set off anything and have to do a reset at Mercedes. Um, so we're gonna put our ground back on and we'll flip over the head unit and kind of show you what the reverse camera looks like. All right, so here it is booted up and basically think of this as like a tablet or a phone. Um, so if you're locked on a screen like this, go ahead and tap it. Um, there's a home button right up here on the left side. We can scroll over, um, you'll see settings. Go into settings, we've already got ours set up, everything. Um, you can kind of mess around with these camera settings um, to get them proper for you. Our camera format was this CVBSN right here at the top. Um, we originally were set up when we got in here, it was at this AHD 720p25. Um, and that does nothing at all when you go into actual reverse on the vehicle. So we select this one right here, works for us. All the other settings are pretty much good, um, straight from the factory. This day mode, and we'll show you here in a second, um, this is actually just for your screen brightness. We thought this was gonna be for the backup camera. Um, go ahead and put, put it in reverse. Put this in, yeah. All right, so here we are, uh, we're in reverse. And if you notice, as I move the wheel, this actually also updates, which is awesome. When we first turned this on and we thought we might've had something hooked up improperly, if you long tap on here, there's an image adjustment. And when we first hooked this up, that's what it looked like. Um, so all you have to do is long hold there on the screen and we just brought that brightness down. So that's basically how you hook up the rear view camera. It's pretty simple and again, if you get caught at all on this system um, just remember you know you can tap you can swipe just think of it like a phone or a tablet and uh, you'll probably find the setting that you're looking for hey guys all right so once we verified in the van that all the electrical was set up correctly our microphone worked well our rear view camera was operational we went ahead and disconnected all the electric brought this unit back in the van because depending on how you buy this iNav unit, you can select one or two USB interfaces. We selected two in our, uh, our package. What some people do is they'll go ahead and run the USB connections underneath like your glove box and just have wires that dangle out there. We prefer to actually install flush mount USB cables in the front of this panel. So we bought these Batige flush mount USB cords off of Amazon. So a foot long, you don't need a long length because the USB interfaces that come with this unit already have some length to them. So you don't need a really long connection. 
And then as you notice here, what we did is the first step was to remove the buttons that are inside this unit. It's only three small screws, and this allows you to move your buttons out of the way. And then we basically measured from the right side of the buttons and the left side of the buttons and selected a nice location here, one inch away from the buttons so we can be consistent on both sides. The size of this opening is one inch wide by half inch height, and it actually fits a Dremel blade that's one inch perfectly. So we put these two pieces of metal, clamped them down, protected the unit with carpenter's tape, and created some guides so that we don't run the risk of the Dremel slipping to the left or right, and slowly just took out this half inch uh, of height going up and down. And then when you're completing, when, you, when you've completed most of this step in the process, we took a file and it's allowing us to go ahead and just make sure that we're filing all the edges down to get a nice square rectangular opening that our flush mount USB interface will then snap into. And this will give passenger and driver uh, a very convenient location to just go ahead and plug your USB device in or phone or what have you. All right guys, so here's what it looks like. We now have our two flush mounted USB ports in here. The final step before we take this unit back into the van and get all the electrical set back up, these were the, uh, the vents that were on the old unit that we showed you earlier how to pop out. We're gonna go ahead and put them in. We already put one in. The only thing you have to be cautious of if it, is it says top here. So you obviously wanna make sure that you're gonna position this in the top part here and then it will simply slide in and clicks in. So we left this film on as well just to protect the screen until the very last minute. So now this is ready to go back in and have all the electrical set up. All right guys, so we're back in the van. We've got all of our connections set up. We have our GPS getting ready to mount. We'll just mount it right here. We have some double-sided tape all ready to go. This was the connection for our rear view camera that we'll make into our camera connection that we explained earlier. This camera port here. We have our microphone that's pre-run up the A-pillar into this upper uh, overhead bin here. So we've made that connection and it says mic right there on the cable. So now that everything is ready and plugged in, we'll go ahead and begin the process of re-securing it to this dashboard.